a uh, show of hands, who had to Google UEFN? <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and together with you, Shot Rum Dynamic, watching us live right here on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. You know I mean, I love them. Gentlemen, what's up? What's new? We got a whole week. Uh, Jordan's eye is falling out. Pedro is uh, filled with uh, phlegm, summer and joy. Snot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Summer sitting over here me. going, man, I really want to like this Intel Arc card, but more on that at 11. Um, anything outside of that going on? Do, do, do we cover all the bases there? I guess so. There's not, I have there's not much glasses. else going on. Pedro's got yeah. new glasses <laughs> on his face, too. My, my, mm-hmm. my eyes are crusting over and will eventually form new lenses over my eyes. <laughs> so would you wear an eye patch if your eye decides to fall off? I was debating this, and the answer is yes. I yeah. would absolutely eye patch it up. Like, really, what, what what do you do? Like, you kind of got to... I don't know. Like, if I had to wear an eye patch, I'd want the scar, too, though. Hmm. Ah. I, 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 I don't know. I, th- I, th- I think I could, I, could just, I could just rock the eye patch. I don't know if I'd want to have, like, an emblem or something on the eye patch, or if I just want, like, a classic, like, black one. I don't know. Uh. Yeah, I definitely have. I'd have to get the eye patch with the scar, just so when somebody's like, "What happened?" I'm like, "Badminton." <laughs> it was a bad mitten. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the one singular mitten. It was really bad. <laughs> oh, right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into it because we're never going to get the eye patches on the. I think the horse has two eye patches at this point. The the horse has eye patches. It's got like swords crossing it. It's got like underscore XX42069 on either side. It's a steam. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about an entire article written about one word. <laughs> Sounds like I'm and that, that word up. is. Well, it's secret. Didn't you watch the beginning? We need to bring back Pee Wee's Playhouse. We're going to have that magic word of the day, right? Can, can, we, can we hire, like, Lawrence Fishburne? I want to, yeah, fuck yes. Uh, Steam could the land on the money. Xbox, man. Supreme X Overlord X. Phil Spencer was asked if he could envision other storefronts coming to the Xbox. And his well-thought-out answer was, yes. <laughs> Why not? Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. So uh, Tom's guy decided to write it in. Well, I don't know if this passes as an article, but they gave it a shot. And that got me thinking, man. Isn't this something we kind of planned on? Like when consoles were no longer, um, when, when they moved over to x86. Because x86 is x86, unless it's not, you know, everybody's like, well, we got, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> and, and Xbox as well. It's like, it's not, it's, it has PC components, but it is not PC architecture. Yeah. Yeah. And like to add some more context to that, you know, Phil was like, okay, Epic Store, Steam, stuff like that. He's like, sure, just, just come on, c- cover me in it, Gabe. Put it all in my face. And Xbox is struggling right now. You know, Microsoft's bought all the studios and even at GDC, some of the scuttlebutt was some of the mid end, uh, you know, not like super triple A title, but like mid tier and upper mid tier publishers were like, we might not consider Xbox for our next title that we're going to put on. This is not going to be worth it. Would it be a good idea? Jordan Swang for Microsoft just to admit defeat and say these console things are dumb. What we're going to give you from now on is a $600 general purpose media center PC that you can install anything on. It's not locked down to anything. We'd really like it. If you would run um, Microsoft Windows 12. Yeah, they're, 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 Microsoft doesn't respect their user base enough to give them that level of freedom. But yeah, may, maybe maybe some like uh, more gen- general like gaming platform type things. I don't know. We're, we're, as 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 game streaming starts becoming more and more of a thing, the actual platform that your game runs on becomes less and less relevant. Because yeah, you know, it's not actually your Xbox that's running your game. Your Xbox is just re- sending and receiving commands to a remote server where the game is actually running. So, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, what, we see a lot of, like, smart TVs now with gaming capabilities. Netflix is serving out games through their service. Like, the, 
there is motion in that regard happening. So well, maybe, maybe it's a thing that'll happen. How do you think the cut's going to work, Pedro? Let's say Steam's going to come to Xbox, and uh, how do you think that negotiation's going to be? Do you think uh, Microsoft's like, no, we want a cut of that 30%, bro? Uh, I don't think... I think at that point, Valve just goes, yeah, you're getting as much of a cut on the Xbox as you do on Windows, which is not... <laughs> None? Do you think Gabe just holds up the Steam Deck and like, remember, do you want to, yeah. do you remember why we created this? <laughs> We've been down this road before. <laughs> We have the solution now, so uh, you want our thing? Cool, you can have our thing. Same deal as everyone else. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. It's an absolutely good idea if uh, Microsoft decide to be a little more open with the Xbox platform and make, you know, because there's also the rumors going around that they want to have their own handheld gaming thing. Every, everyone says, so, apparently. Yes, <laughs> as it turns out, seemed like popular. Um, but yeah, no, to, just to have something that's more open, something that's not a proprietary plastic, stupid little box that everyone hates, but they begrudgingly have to accept because as, as, Microsoft's as long, been going around buying. As long exclusives. as Microsoft can like figure out a way to like wedge themselves into them and collect like a little tithe, I think they'll be fine in the long run. I, I, I'm not. I'm not worried about them. I think. Where do they do? Okay. Where do they go? Because like. Um consoles are dying man yeah like well it is, it, yeah it's all, everything, it's all mobile it's all yeah well yeah. i think everything's hurting right now though dude and even mobile because like people are just like i just play the games i got right now <laughs> yeah the, the, the casual side the mobile casual side that's still going just fine that don't give a shit <laughs> now, microsoft it has seems proven to that be... they can make hardware that is open like the yes. surface laptops right but but again, but again, Microsoft is as as you often bring up. Then Microsoft is one of those things where it's like a multi-headed organization where yeah. some one part might have a really good idea, and then another part is going to go bite that other head in the throat and be like, "No, you're not allowed to do that. You're har you're harsh in our buzz." So <laughs> maybe right, like I, I could see like know. the. I mean, I'd love that, and of course, Microsoft was right to Microsoftize it because you know that DNA is like deeply grained. I never thought the Xbox. Uh, you you. Yuckins, uh, I don't know if you remember, like, remember the initial announcements for the next Xbox? I'm like, Microsoft's making a game console? What? Like, all right, I'm sure they'll sell 10 of them, and, you know, here we are 20 years later. But, uh, oh, okay, it'd be good, but it would still be some form of, because Microsoft tried to make that media PC. Remember that epic burn that PlayStation was able to deliver? I think it was at E3 when Microsoft first announced, like, we're we have this oh, yeah. hyper convoluted uh, DRM scheme for game sharing that's going to mm. get rid of used games and it's great. And so, and Windows, there's a like, webcam this is that's always on and a microphone that's always has listening. to be connected. It is perfect. Yeah. If you unplug it, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then on stage, it's like, how do you share games with PlayStation? And, and then yeah, no, it does. Yeah. But, but, but hey, now. Now, what I think the digital uh, version of the PS5 is still more expensive than the one that takes discs, right? That was that's the thing that's still uh, happening. What? That, that's the thing. Even during the scalpocalypse, whatever you want to call it, uh, the PlayStation outsold the Xbox significantly. But there were like there were Xboxes in stock. There were Xboxes everywhere. You couldn't find a fucking PS5 to save your life. But there were plenty of Xboxes lying around, so clearly they're doing something wrong. I don't know, man. Game Pass doesn't. I mean, Game Pass is a good idea, but you gotta have those big titles. But you know, we're yeah, but like we're talking about this like very short sighted. Like, too. Microsoft's also capable. They got enough money in the bank, as Jordan has brought up a couple of times. They got all kinds of money. They're capable of playing the long game. So I'm just curious, like, what is Sony doing right? Because it's not like Sony is like making any strives winning people's hearts and minds over i'm i'm they got games about, i guess i guess they got games the, i mean it's a real well, simple but, equation but they what have like five exclusives total i think yeah, they have like a, but that's the thing they don't microsoft need the exclusives, exclusives. Yeah. <laughs> as we're going to be talking later on yeah. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess having some rather than none mm. i mean and it, and it shifts back and forwards man like you know the playstation 3 versus uh, yeah, 360 yeah the yeah. 360 was definitely the winner in that i think between ps4 and the xbox one that i think ps4 probably won that one 
Oh yeah, the PS4 yeah. ran away with that one yeah. because again, the Xbox One was the one that had you had to have the Kinect always on, and it was always looking, and yeah. it was always listening, and uh, it had to be online, uh, always I, online, and then I, I guess, it wasn't always I guess online. Maybe it had to call in once a day or something like that. Do you think people <laughs> are just like in general, just kind of sick of Microsoft? No, no I, I don't. I don't think most people like know and their care. Like they like. What? Oh, the micro Bill Gates guy from back then? Uh, funny meme guy. All right, sure. I don't, I don't know, but like we're, we're we're talking we're talking about people who like buy. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that's hurt right? the previous two generations of welcome back to console cast. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, three people. Uh, so it's been confusion and choice paralysis with the Xbox branding. With the because I make fun of it all the time because it's easy to make fun of the Xbox One S S X X tricky S S S X X X. Like who the fuck? PlayStation's got it right. You got PlayStation One, two, three, four, and Pro. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about within same generation, oh, man. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, like you don't know, and like some games are and are not backwards compatible. But like it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess over there in Redmond. Um, who knows? But yeah, if Microsoft could give you like a decent Steam machine for six hundred bucks, I'd buy. I'd hold my nose and buy one, as long as I could wipe it and put you know whatever Steam OS equivalent is for the cheap hardware it's intel arc only though <laughs> for 600 bucks huh? i mean the whole wintel moniker doesn't wasn't a thing that just you know showed up one day <laughs> that's gonna do it for our steamy news let's go ahead and talk about not one well you know what we're just gonna talk about one new game this week the other one well, it's not, it's it's not the other one is technically new yes yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, the first one is Slice and Dice, which is a game that I've played a lot of on my phone. Like, legitimately, I've played a lot of this game on my phone because it's the only game that's on my phone. So yeah, uh, I bought it, I can't remember, a few years ago. And it's available now. It's on Steam. It's uh, £7.50, I'm guessing nine ninety nine over in the US. Yeah, about 10 And it is... 11. Yeah, oh, eight ninety nine. All right. Get your shit uh, right, Mate. Yeah, all right. Yeah, this is, it's just one below ten bucks. Uh, but yeah, it is. Uh, it's a. They describe it as a tactical dice rolling roguelite game, and that is a very good description because each of your characters has a dice. You roll the dice. You pick what dice you want to keep, and then you can roll them again for the ones you didn't like. Your mages usually have a bit more variance because you can either choose to cast a spell that you. Um, got or just save the mana cost and use that but to cast like bigger spells moon speak is this 120 hero classes plus nine 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 because uh each of the classes uh has enough variance in the die uh-huh. that you can effectively yeah. tr- turn one class yeah, into you- another <laughs> yeah, but we're we're basically like every class is just like the number of okay. or the, the specific moving on to on I'm curious uh infinity symbol curses Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they can just generally generate a random curse for you. Right. The, yes. What what stood out <laughs> for me, my boy Ziggurath is on the uh, is on the uh, uh, soundtrack credits, and that's he's he's been putting out some pretty good dungeons over the past couple of years. So shout outs to Ziggurath. That that shit's great. Um, yeah, I tried and, the demo, and that is that is some fucking dicey dungeons crack. Oh my god, I'm uh, yeah, I got hooked. <laughs> uh, the demo though, it does have a demo. It is borked under Linux. You smash the proton button, and it runs fine. Uh, that's does the uh, full version uh, run natively? I don't know. I don't have the Steam version. What, what I did do was, uh, and I can tell you for a fact that those minimum requirements are legit, because I have the Android version installed on Wadroid on the Celeron Chromebook, which is, you know, passively cooled. And it plays without issue, even on a system that low end, so... I mean, it should. I wouldn't be surprised here, Ben. I mean, I'm not looking at that going, man, I bet that's got some serious... Uh, we've seen, we've tracing, seen games that look like they shouldn't require... Gonna have to cut DLS. I, I do. I, re- I really want to make like a box standard pixel shooter and have like full DLSS, <laughs> DLSS 3 and like ray tracing. And... Just, just make Qbert with ray tracing. Oh, dude, not even that fancy. Yeah, I tried it and like you, I clicked play and it went, you know, does that little blip and I'm like, well, we know what that is, an empty depot. And um, went ahead and swapped that out. And not my type of game, but I, I get it. I immediately got it. I'm like, yeah, I could see this working. I'm like, it's something that you would pick up 
fuck around with, put it down and be done with. And, you know, until like 10 minutes pass, then you pick it back up. Yeah. Do it very, very, very much in, in the style of like Slay the Spire and whatnot, where like, yeah, you can spend 10 minutes playing it or you can inadvertently drop yeah. two hours in it. And, and it's like, not graphically mm-hmm. intensive, you know, for audio listeners, as most of you get like a little block of dudes over here and block of baddies over here. You pick on you guys, you pick your attacks and you do your dice rolls and you get to re-roll. You know, because sometimes the dice has come up, you know, not anti mill house with big axes on them. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I get it. A uh, simple mechanic. And I'm sure there's lots of uh, complexity with like using your shields. And there's some fun class stuff where like you can do more damage depending on how much shields you have on a guy. There, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of like Voltron wombo combo shit. Yeah. That like it's the neuron activation meme. This is exactly the kind of shit I love playing. And That's for complex. those of you who like the hipster pixel stuff, dude, this thing it just has some strong PS one vibes to it. Like with with the uh, jiggly pixels. Mm, yeah. 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 No, it, it is surprisingly because to, to me when I saw this game. And it was one of those games that Google just advertised to me on the Play Store. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. We'll try. Oh, oh, this is actually nice. Okay, fine, I'll buy the actual game. Uh-huh. So, yeah, no, it is legitimately really well done. And it's really, really fun. If you have something with a touchscreen, laptop, Steam Deck, or x86 tablet, yeah, the solid recommendation. What was the name? Was it just called Dragon? Dragon the game, yeah. That, Dragon the, one the game. That I look, I looked at a while ago. Yeah. Oh, and I saw a while this ago. One. You mean like eight years ago? Yeah, that's a while. <laughs> that's a minute. Yes. That's a good <laughs> long while ago. But this is not that. This is Dragon's Legacy, which is not actually a full game. It is the beta of another game. Uh, as as the initial review says, this is this is one where you get to be a dragon, lay eggs, blah 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 blah. But yeah, um, this is uh, the Day of Dragons Legacy branch, meaning that um, every everyone who awesome. uh, be awesome become a dragon. If you kickstarted this game and you didn't like the direction that the new game was going in, they they gave this copy to everyone who kickstarted it for free, and they also put it up for sale, which is a little strange to me because it costs you a hundred dollars to actually list this thing. So maybe maybe you're hoping that you know, like what twenty people will buy the game. The old, the old version of your game that's available and you'll you'll make that back i don't i don't know i i, I mean like we, we, that's not a good sales pitch it, it it really it really isn't i i don't think they brought that up on the uh store page they're like yeah this they, is some they, old they, hat they, stuff we they, they did not this is this no. is th- you gotta thank eve stargaze in the in the reviews for explaining yes. this to us yeah i that, was that, taking a that look that at it review is a uh, damn name <laughs> You look at the screenshots and like, yeah, this is something that would have been interesting to see. And it looked, uh, look, looks all right. Four ninety nine. And like every time I see the word sandbox, I, I head over to Google and I, I start typing because you can usually find uh, everything you need to find over here in the Unity asset store <laughs> for these dragons, because that's what this appears to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, the actual full game Day of Dragons uh, is... 20 is 25.99 Canadian. Okay. You can get the complete collection for 50 cuz there's a bunch of DLC as well. <sighs> they chopped up all the other assets and they they sold them separately. It it makes me a little bit of sad we we cuz like we 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 were checking in on that dragon game. You might remember like it was a long yeah. time ago. I think even um Sterling took a crack mm. cuz We've kind of fallen as a society with our standards of like what we will and will not like seriously drag the pitchforks out for a game's quality. What was the first game that we got uh, that had a Linux port that the dude was removed? There was the big hubbub about it. Uh, it was the oh, whole, super uh, Superlands. No, it was the robot tech demo thing that was just like a little sandbox, and the guy removed it from Steam. Just, oh, um, Earth Year 2066? Yes. Oh, oh, that <laughs> yes. one. Yeah, geez. Which, if you <laughs> compare it to some of the stuff like that is, like, on it. Steam right now for sale, that's competently done. That's true, yeah. I kind of feel like we're just, like... I think it's it's just the volume, right? Like, back, mm. back then, back then, like, you still had green light and shit to contend with, so you still needed to provide, like, something. These days, if you got 100 bucks, you can put your shit on the Steam store. And yeah. We had higher standards back then. Like you expected a game to meet a certain quality level to be on Steam. And now my, how things have changed. 
But as Jordan said, yeah, there's a full or a real version of the game with online PvP and uh, apparently a busted anti-cheat system that everyone's complaining about. Yes. <laughs> Sadly, no. Dragons. Uh, a couple of game updates, up to and including Skullduggery. Can you read what's in my mind? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's Marie. Yes, we, we, we've been talking about Skullgirls and the f uh, everything that uh, the developers have gone through with the previous owner. And uh, I'm very, very glad that they not only have uh, gotten over that, but have kept on developing Skullgirls. And Marie, the current, uh, if you played the game, she's the current Skullgirl in the story. You can now actually play as her. Uh, she's, yeah, the last character of the first season pass and there's going to be uh more characters coming up there they are working on uh, a few guest edition characters for the mobile version of the game one of them is called minette which is one t too many off of the portuguese word for cunnilingus but <laughs> that was just a, an unfortunate thing that i uh, noticed on their release notes uh, yeah, the, the, the other thing that I noticed, uh, because I used to play Valentine a lot, so it was one of my favorite characters, um, the needle projectile that she has, uh, it could do one of three different um, status effects, which were completely indistinct <laughs> up to now, basically. <laughs> you could not tell which of the things were, uh, be, and some of the key combos were very, very similar. But they have actual differentiation now uh, between each one, which is really, really nice. And yeah, they, yeah no, there's just more improvements. <laughs> yeah, they, they added some, fa the, some fancy new palette swaps for all of the characters. They have a heavy announcer pack. A lot of the stuff they've been adding is like uh, paid content for if you want like full voice acting for specific characters or different voice packs, different uh, color pads, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, we haven't talked about it for a while, but it's been a few patches where these guys have just pushed out updates. And this is like how you fucking get a return on investment from making sure that your engine just supports Linux right off back. Because like, yeah, all, all, all of this new development gets supported on multiple platforms. You didn't really need to put a lot of effort to maintain that. Um, and yeah, we're, we're just seeing that like it allows you to, it pays dividends. It allows you to continue to put out content and make it as available to as many people as possible. I'm always curious about this game and why Skullgirls, because uh, I watch Maximilian doing, right? Because he's got the, the, the other Pedro, the cooler. Yeah. Pedro. Um, the reason I know even that the streamer exists is because Jordan's like, we got a budget X million, dude. And I'm like, what? I got to go look this guy up. <laughs> yeah, straight up. You know, it, it's like Pedro with a pallet swap. And I don't know. That, like, I, I don't see it. <laughs> Nori agrees. I, I, I've shown Maximilian to Nori's like, oh yeah, no, this looks like you. Okay, all right. Right. I, I, you know what? I did a double take the first time that face <laughs> popped up on YouTube. I'm like, is Pedro putting out shit on his... Nope, this is a different person. Yeah. Okay. He plays a lot of the fighting games, and uh, a lot of the fighting games are like massively... Put, like I've never heard of this stuff. That's one of the reasons I'll tune in. And a bunch of it's like weeb fighting games, too. It's like anime fighting games, and like they have huge communities. Why did Skullgirls just never take off? Like, what's the story behind that? Like, what happened to kneecap and nerf this to the point? And I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I went and looked it up. Like, at least on Steam, this game averages like 100 and 120 players a day. Like, I mean, it's not nothing, but that's a rounding error. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think like more, more anime fighters have like come out since. Like, there's been Guilty Gears. There's been like um, Melty Bloods and the, the, the other ones. I think, I think there's just like a lot more competition now. Um, and admittedly, Guilty Gear has been around for a while. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Gu Guilty Gear is starting to like get a lot more popular now because it's been around yeah. forever. But like, it was it was kind of like the the not Street Fighter, but now we get some mm -hmm. like hardcore Guilty Gear stands out there. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I th I think I think it's just like it, it it's an older it's an older fighting game. Uh, I think it came out at the time where like crowd crowdfunding, right? Like, um, the. So you know, pe pe a lot, a lot of those games came out, and people just kind of played them and lost. Do you think it's time for an update? When did uh, Skull Girls uh, second? Twenty thirteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's been a decade now. Holy moly! Yeah, and they had that issue that that entire issue around Lab Zero and what they could and couldn't do with the game until they sorted out who owns what and who actually has um, the responsibility for the Skull Girls. Maybe it's thing. time for Skull Girls on Cortres. <laughs> 
Skullgirls and Knuckles. <laughs> if they keep on improving like they've been doing for a while now, and they keep on working like having active season passes and new characters and whatnot, they may very well get a bit of a second win going. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, it's always seemed like a fun game, and you know, it's had Linux support roughly, you know, not since day one, but it eventually got it. Thanks, oh. Simic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's be fair. Like, somebody had to show up and do it for free. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Simic. Yeah. We owe you. <laughs> yes. they, they, owe, they owe you, actually. Correct. Now. All right. Uh, on this news, something, you know what? Anytime I see the word battle mage show up, I'm like, please be good news. Please be real. Because I think we all feel that, you know, it's kind of got to happen. And of course, we're talking about the new next generation video cards from that little scrappy upstart, Intel. And WCF Tech's got two different articles. Because apparently somebody lit up an engineering prototype, and I got a little bit of a benchmark. This was a 24-core, 12-gig unit, and you know, really nothing more than just proof that Z Part 2 actually exists. The silicon is real. You know, it's not just fanfic and wishes. So someone actually made a thing. Right. Like, this, this thing exists, which is like, okay, that, that's not bad. That's not bad, Intel marketing department. Um... Judging by the performance, Pedro Mateus, I, I think this is very much in the uh, smoke test phase, the PCB layout. Like, let's plug it in and see if it catches on fire while running a thing, maybe. Yeah, they had that little graph with the the megapixels per second on the Sandra GP GPU uh, mm -hmm. processing benchmark. And they have, oh, it's the 770 and the 750. And then where you'd expect the A380 to be. They instead have the new uh, Battle Mage XZ2 LPG cards. It's like, oh, all right. So that's the level of performance we're expecting. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're ho ho hoping some drivers can improve on that a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think this is a not even a qualification. This is like straight up. Uh, oh, when I say smoke test, this is like, okay, we got something on a board. You know, mm. let's see if it runs you know it's like when you see engineering samples of cpus they're often heinously underclocked this is like a 50 percent performance decrease from the actual thing oh you we get spitball <laughs> for all we know the no maybe this is like 98 percent. this is all i can do <laughs> yeah no it's just for cpus at least intel cpus it tends to be like half <laughs> but it is real like it um is no a speculation i mean bmg g10 and 21 hpg they're coming out like they're coming out this year allegedly oh uh, i don't know i, I want to see something that fills me with hope this doesn't fill me with hope it doesn't fill me with dread either this is just like okay this is interesting it makes me smile a little bit knowing that this silicon is out there like they've already got the chips together now they just got to get them on some boards I don't give a hot damn about a 12 gig card in 2024. I think 16 or eight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will take 12 on something that's supposed to be competing with like, say a 40, 60 ish, but mm -hmm. yeah, I not... have a 6,700 X. I mean, has 12 gigs I, of VRAM. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't because a 40, 60 is competing with a 30, 60 TI ish. Mm -hmm. yeah. 6,700 XC, 30, 60 TI, 40, 60. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got AMD over here. AMD's AMD's just way too content being second. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA's a little too busy competing with themselves in the high end. NVIDIA's not even competing <laughs> with anyone at this point. <laughs> NVIDIA's like, like, give us money, motherfuckers. We don't right. give a shit. I'm like, what you gonna do? They, they just made the... Four, the turned out to be a smart move, man. We're just gonna make this insane, unhinged 4090. And like, what are we, like, three years later? Like, nothing is messing around with it. Intel, get your shit together. Um, I'm looking forward and fix your compute stack. Hopefully between now and when the, because Intel Arc has already been on the market now for um, 18 months. Linux state is usable, but it's not great. There's so much room for improvement. I'll have a video uh, out about that with a full write-up uh, probably by this time next week, and we'll talk about it on the show. So, uh, and yeah, there's going to be two flavors of this battle mage, you know, there's going to be a little baby mobile version, a little power sipping version. Then there's going to be the one that uses 
more power, and hopefully goes burr just a little harder. Uses all the power. Is it even on your radar, though? Like, At this point, no. M- you know, may- maybe... I have I have a HTPC that could maybe have stand to have the the RX 580 in there replaced with something a little newer, but like yeah, no. I, I, I don't know. Battle Mage. Uh, the one thing I definitely want to see is like power usage for Intel Arc, even at idle, is atrocious. Yeah, and that's not a Linux thing. That's just an Intel Arc thing. And like some of the hoops and loops people have come up with to try to get it down, just where it's like reasonable. It's kind of crazy. That's one of the things that should work out of the box, but maybe it will be ready in time for Wayland. So what? <laughs> Ten years? Fifteen? <laughs> right around Actually, the yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it another like nine months. <laughs> yeah, considering uh, how, mo- how big a kick in the shins uh, Joshua Ashton, uh, Joshy the Froggy Boy, uh, the person behind D Nine VK, currently working for Valve, and. Um, Basically, going over to the SDL um, GitHub like, and saying, hey, this is the second attempt to uh, get uh, SDL3 to prefer um, X11 in, instead of Wayland, because the default right now is set to Wayland. But there's a few issues. Well, <laughs> there's a number of issues. Namely, Wayland doesn't support the first in, first out method for vSync. So, uh, and the only way to fix that would be to actually create an entirely new protocol to support it. And apparently, no one was aware that that was a thing. <laughs> you have sort, um, sort, sort of, sort no, of. No, you you have the comments from like Detective Conan there, uh, and he's like the perfect. It's like, oh, I is this an issue? I I didn't actually well, think this was an issue. So 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 they they say that but like and and that, this isn't an issue on Gamescope though because Gamescope effectively implements FIFO v1 and effectively mm-hmm. has the commit timing uh, v1 protocols that are required for this thing to not like horribly bottleneck on your GPU. Now. Uh, <laughs> but um so long long and fruitful discussions were have. It seems like the resolution so far is um, SDL three will now probe to see if FIFO V one and commit timing V one are supported. If it if it has if your compositor has it, it will default to Wayland. Otherwise, it will default back to X Wayland, and that will be it uh, until until this gets resolved. But as Pedro is saying now, now people are aware of it. Now we hopefully we can get some motion on the Kwin and Mutter side and the other various Wayland compositors to get something like this implemented. Um, Kwin kind of sort of supported it already. So this is going to be reliant on the compositor, not the, we're not going to need changes in the Wayland protocol itself. You're going to need an entirely new protocol to be implemented. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's currently unfixable. Um, Joshi did a good thing, man, because like, strangely enough, we have uh, the more than one person show up in the thread and saying that like, no, we got to do this. We got to force hands here. We got to break user space, which and and yeah. Joshi was not fond fond of that because no he, was like, no, he, he th- won and done that man because uh, he was like yeah we are absolutely accepting this is unfixable right now very adult very mature that's what I like to see I was happy and yeah like th- this is don't break user space is <laughs> like just, you don't you don't hold loaded guns to developers heads and say you better fix this or people are going to be mad at you. Like that's not SDL's job right there. You know, it, yeah. it, it's to work. It's to have a usable system. And like, I, I, it boggles my mind that this even had to be, because it's such a obvious, like, yeah, just detect if it does like do a fallback, man. Like it's not. Yeah. And, and, and like that, that solution comes up very, very early in the thread and people are like, yeah, no, this seems like the re- the reasonable thing to do. But yeah, th- no, there, there, there's definitely, there's definitely the discussion of like, yeah, the SDL code base is not the place to get up on your stoke box and, and demand that things work a certain way. This is a, this is an upstream project that people consume and you need to, you need to keep your users in mind. Yeah. With, Especially for changes. very demanding applications like video games. Uh, and no, th- again, the, the point that I was making earlier, cause, uh, you have, um, <laughs> basically detective conan being the one person that's like look the fifo whalen protocol it can be implemented at anyone at any one time as soon as anyone wants and everyone's going why hasn't implemented it yet it's, clearly there's a demand for it so, 
We didn't know. We legitimately didn't know that this was a necessity, that this was a requirement. So clearly there has been a, a big enough kick in the shin now to get all the balls rolling for all of the different compositors and everything. And I, yeah, no, the thing that kind of surprised me uh, was the fact that the Steam overlay and Steam input for Wayland native applications still doesn't work. That was um, shocking. <laughs> I mean, I always keep in mind, because I see this brought up um, from time to time, is the, um, like, you know, there's no war between X and Wayland, because the same people who developed X are developing Wayland. Mm -hmm. That's positive and negative. Now, I wouldn't expect any breakneck progress on this, but at least they're aware of it. I just want to be realist. And, like, it does already work in game scope, and I'm pretty sure that, like, something like this can be relatively simply implemented, just because, like, most of the groundwork has already been done through game scope. So, yeah, like, ho yes. like I think this is pretty much like going to be a non problem. I just want to make sure, like, good on Joshi, because this is read the title this is take two of trying to like get a very simple yeah. like there shouldn't have been any friction on this to begin with and there's already a take three with uh the proper um pull request to check whether or not it supports whether the running compositor supports fifo and if it does it can do it if not it just goes back to using x Wayland. Yeah. but again yeah. these it's it's always it's always good to see the stuff go it, like evolve in progress like because shit gets identified and fixed and hope we can have like productive technical discussions about. This. I mean, it is yeah. like the truth to it. The more people use something, you're gonna under you know no, that that's how it's got to take place. But that's got that's a weird line to have to balance back and forwards on, you know, because you don't want to just like outright break stuff for people, but you also want to deliver those ever so loving, gentle nudges. Like, come on, it's like, let's get some movement on this. Incremental progress, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Well, what, what, one upstream consumer of SDL is <laughs> Wesnoth, and they have a new release. And, you know, I, I thought, like, when was the last time Wesnoth had a release? And I went back to their GitHubs, and I looked at their, uh, their release cadence. It's like, okay, they do about one a year. That's much faster than I would have guessed. Uh, but, yeah, they have a brand new update out, 1.18. Uh, they got one brand new campaign and two existing campaigns. You get a big old massive overhaul with some better story, some better AI, and so on. You get some matched history uh, features as well, so you can look at your old matches. Uh, and they have built-in achievements, but they're not Steve achievements. Go and they're skeleton. not they're not the uh, they're not the open source achievements that run on the Fediverse. They're just built-in achievements to battle for Wesnoth, so that you can show off your Wesnoth EP to all the other folks. This is just one of those long-standing open source projects that's been around for fucking forever. It's always cool to see them push. I mean, it. it's available it's, on Steam these days. It, yeah, it's true. Yes. So you can run over and grab it now. They do say this is a completely not to sell a short, man. New rendering engine. And that just happens to come with a 60% boost in FPS. All those extra <laughs> FERPs. So you can really crush those pixels at 640 by 480. However, you might want to rock and roll with it. And here's a big quality of life improvement. For those of you, the six or seven of you, I don't know how many people play it online. But if you do online multiplayer with this, you can now keep track of people you played games against. And that's really important, man. Nice. That's really important when you find that one person like, that was awesome. I got to run. You never hear from them again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, well, random, our ships random shall never friends. pass yeah. and touch ship wieners. <laughs> I, one time, one time, I actually ended up going to school with one of those people. We were talking about it, and I found out what his username was on Battle.net. I'm like, oh, I fucking remember you. Ah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> mm. That was, that was weird, weird serendipity. It, it's, it's been known to happen, but it's good that they're, they're putting this in to let people actually stay in touch. Yeah, it's dope. Because, uh, you know, everybody's got their Steam friends that, like, last online nine years ago or something like that. Yeah. Uh, completely free. Download it, and uh, you can get the binary. You can get it everywhere. I mean, what's not just been out forever, man? And it, I, uh, I wish they really had a pay what you want thing on Steam because, like, yeah, just toss them a couple bucks, right? Been... Yeah, just create a bit of DLC. Just get yeah. like the source code or something on Steam. It's like costs five bucks. There, done. Yeah, wonderful time. <laughs> now, just let people give you money. <laughs> Jordan, you are uh 
more familiar with the either than Pedro myself about a game made of blocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, only marginally so, but I will flaunt my my knowledge over all of you. Ha <laughs> ha! I am the Roblox master. All shall bow before me. Uh, yeah. So uh, this this is an open source project called The Mirror, and this is just uh, XKCD nine twenty seven incarnate. So um, there are a lot of games out there that allow you to make games within them. Uh, you can do this through Fortnite. You can do this through Second Life. You can do this through Roblox, um, Minecraft to some degree. Yeah, you. Hey, can I, can I interrupt you for a second? Fortnite. What's up? All right, uh, show of hands. Who had to Google UEFN? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, the, 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 the only right. reason I can tell you what that is is because I Googled it. Yeah, it's it's the game editor in Fortnite. As you were. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, people people are making content in Fortnite, and that's how they share it out. So these guys are like, hey, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't have uh, for-profit corporations try to exploit people. Let's make an open source version of this. And, you know, it's not it's not a bad idea. Uh, in principle, you know, a ground from the ground up floss version of essentially what is a metaverse. Well, I mean, we we might as well use the term to describe what what the what the thing originally that's is what for. they're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, so might yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, essentially an open source metaverse done in Godot. Uh, done in uh, with uh, some web uh, technology components like JavaScript, so that uh, it is more accessible for people to make games with. And yeah, like from 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 the ground up, uh, having an open source version isn't a bad idea, if only to have like the weird hipstery mind test option. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the the thing that I didn't like that's step one. Join our Discord. Fuck you. Seriously, get fucked. Step one should never be to join the echo chamber. Step one should be to read the documentation, the source, which is step three in your thing. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Seriously, uh, the, the the question is because Roblox and Fortnite have the l amount of content and the amount of people contributing to it that they do because there's a very prolific marketing team that's actively trying to weaponize children against Apple. Epic. Uh, so who's going to weaponize the children in order to use the mirror? What kind of weapon are we talking about, though? Is it like some right. sort of trebuchet right. like, or like a railgun? What or... is our yield in megatons here? Yeah. How, how, many, how many children know, can some we simultaneously shit launch? <laughs> at, at, and, and like, what, what's, what's our target spread here? Is it compatible with socks? Can we do area <laughs> denial with children? That's what I want to know. Have fun parsing that one, YouTube algorithm. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're just like, eh, not monetized. Like, why is this one taking well, nine hours? To... Uh, you know what? I, I'm not against it, man. Like, if you got the editor for, like, a fork knife and, like, I don't know, open source, I mean, it, it is a fork of Godot, uh, but it's an open source fork of Godot. And, like, you know, even if this turns out to be a thought experiment I'm like yeah hey, we tried to do a good and nobody showed up I'm like good on you for at least trying man you know at least you're not sitting around being a do nothing bitch on the internet you got that going for you um i will agree to discord though as somebody who had to track down information for an older game i ran into a situation where i had to find i found the forums on web archive right the forums had gone away <sighs> oh boy so i was already on web archive going through the forums and i'm like what did you see user you know fill in the blank xkcd i saw and, someone on mastodon post like should github have like their own irc server just so that you can like keep everything within github just <sighs> oh, oh, oh off to your at GitHub least ID. github has discussions now it's a step in the right direction but like i found where the forums and i found where that sidewalk ended with this and they're like we're moving to a discord so this was the first time in my life where i had contact with somebody who had taken their forums and just moved everything to Discord the best they could. Discord's great for chat. We have a Discord. It's available for our Twitch subs and our patrons. We've been on since like, you know, 30 seconds after Discord launched. But we use it for chat. It's good for chat. It's good for video conferencing. It's an absolute shit show replacement for forums because I found myself in that situation of trying to find, I need to know this file is. None of this stuff's threaded, and I'm searching random chat rooms, trying to trace back conversations, which would have taken seconds in traditional bulletin board system. And it was a hot mess, and I eventually just had to add more to the static of like, does anybody have this? By the way, this is a Norwegian-only speaking Discord. <laughs> just, just to keep things interesting for me. Um, 
Yeah, don't use Discord as a form replacement. Yeah, that's it, that, that was my long it, way of agreeing with Pedro. <laughs> yeah, so, as someone in like a professional context who has to deal with Slack in very much the same capacity, uh-huh. having shit in a place that is like easily searchable is key to actually mm-hmm. recovering information. One yeah. of the reasons for Reddit's success story, because that's what Reddit is, it's bulletin board system. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's a form, yeah. Easily indexed, easily searchable. One of the reasons I have a bulletin board system at interfacinglinux.com. One, Reddit's not long for this world. It's like, if you don't or if you haven't put those tea leaves together, it's going to come as a surprise to you. But two, I want a searchable index. And, get, you know, I don't answer tech support in on GitHub. Well, sometimes on GitHub, yes, but never in a YouTube comment because you never find a YouTube comment and you're search your google search your duck duck go search for your solution what do you find form post you find reddit oh yeah don't don't do your technical dumps in discord there you go soapbox over here i've slid it out of the way <laughs> we can move on yeah no Indeed. that 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 is the unfortunate because yes i too like discord and not for any kind of information what? archival any yeah, kind that- of Chat, chat is not email. Email is not chat. Yeah. And people who think that they are the same really need to have their heads checked. Well, it's I'm just sorry. like the headspace of like, would you have ever considered using you're like, hey guys, we're getting rid of our bulletin board system and we're all moving to IRC. We're just going to use our IRC for that. And I'm like, oh yeah, g- good good luck finding fucking literally anything. Those IRC logs yeah. are gone. <laughs> right. I mean, it's the same difference, man. Uh, all right. Last bit of the evening bad news pour one out get the trumpets play sad trombone noises because <laughs> the gold rush is over slay the spire and darkest dungeon devs uh, say that game pass and epic exclusive deals have dried up for indie developers it's not easy being indie right now and look there's a little scully boy right there he's got what, 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 what is that leeches yeah he's yes one, one of the darkest dungeon enemies oh, does right. awful shit to your face probably <laughs> <laughs> so they, they had a little talk that, you know, they talked with a couple of developers here and, you know, being able to cut a deal with like who the hell ever, it really doesn't matter, has been a good thing for any developers because, hey, sometimes it'll let you break even on your game even before you release it, which is just like winning the damn lottery for a lot of these lads. So I don't fault them for that. And Epic and Microsoft, they've been uh, kind of reevaluating things lately, if you haven't noticed. Both of them have decided to take this very bold, innovative uh, stance of just not throwing money at walls anymore saying let's yep. see what sticks maybe maybe they'll make a great game here here here's some money go out and run make a great game maybe not because and that that's kind of been the norm for the past couple of years too like we how many times have you seen like random indie again i'm not knocking any of these developers get paid son how many like random on epic exclusive you're like what huh i've never like why how did you get that deal i mean good on you but how do you get yeah. that deal? Those days, I believe it's going to be behind us, man. Because and you think about exclusives traditionally. That was what got me thinking, though. Exclusives, I'd say traditionally, were made to sell platforms. Something we talked about in the pre-show, you know. And we're talking hardware. We're talking consoles. Or to get you to a store. You know, it's going to only be on the Microsoft Game Store. It's only available on Steam. Only available on Epic. And traditionally, those games were like, triple a titles big polished things that you're like ooh, i need to go get that you know your horizon zero dawns go buy a playstation fucko it never made sense to me at least like the of just making smaller indie titles exclusive like where's the drive motivation like i, I never saw the end game of that i always have said from the beginning awesome for the development team awesome for indie devs but for the company i'm like the fuck did you ever expect to come of this though like nobody's gonna how many times both of you we've all been there leave a comment on the youtube video how many times have you heard of a game somebody's talking about it, you're like wait what when did that come out? oh it's on epic oh that's why i haven't heard about it all right 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 yeah, and again, like with with uh, more smaller teams, like you, uh, I was gonna bring this up with uh, with the mirror, but like, fuck, um, Lethal Company that came out of Roblox, right? Mm-hmm. Like that guy was originally making Roblox games, and then he decided to make a big boy game, and now we have Lethal Company. Um, so like, yeah, uh, we're, we're 
the, the, the sweetheart deals that indie devs were getting were never going to last forever, right? Like, we all knew that eventually Epic was going to start running out of cash. And I guess, like, for Game Pass, theoretically, Microsoft can throw infinite money at the problem, but they don't necessarily want to do that forever. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, are, is, what, what's, what's going to change? Are we, are we going to start seeing, like, uh, Game Pass go up in price? Are we going to start seeing Epic get rid of these free games? No, yeah, I think this is, like, bizarre fever dream of like trying a bit i don't even think it's like a money issue for either company at all this is just like both of them going this doesn't work does it I'm like well, no it never yeah. did well no, uh, but, but it, that's, it, that's, it, that's, it, is, it is a money issue though because it's not it's not getting them their return on investment well I, I, I mean it's a business decision versus yeah, yeah. like oh we can't keep you know we'd love to yeah. keep doing this this is that's what i'm coming from neither right. of these companies are going man i wish we could keep doing this because it's so great both of them are like there's any work. Well, yeah. What, right. what, what, when was the, yeah, they were expecting the other shoe to drop at right. some point. They were they expecting like, yeah. 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 And, no, and, the, and yeah, go on. that they clearly have started to realize Microsoft is slowly starting to realize that, uh, exclusives do not an Xbox sell because they have, they've bought a lot of gaming game development and game publishers and a few a bunch of studios and a bunch of people that work for Microsoft now. Activision Blizzard <laughs> being the latest one. Uh yeah, they they also bought Bethesda and they were being, you know, really proactive in the marketing saying, "Yes, the new the new Bethesda RPG is coming to Xbox only and it's going to be, you know, the the first new IP from Bethesda in however many years." Then Starfield launched and it was well, it was Starfield. Um and yeah, Epic actually posted losses uh, after a while and uh, they had to cut back on how many exclusives they were uh, paying money to and those kind of decisions only serve to benefit Epic and Microsoft themselves because they own the platforms and they can have more control over the kind of developers and the kind of games that so, they have on their platforms so, so where, it only where, where, helps where them go and the developers where do you think this is going to go in the future, though? That, that's that's what I mean. Like, um, Epic has invested a lot of money into this. Uh, Microsoft also has invested a lot of money into it. Are are they just going to pull out? Are we are we just going to see them like we, we? I mean, we we saw like Ubi give up. They they were trying to be all like, oh, come to come to EA, UB Play or whatever Ubisoft Connect to buy games. And now they're Same all the shit's EA, available yeah. on. I, uh, I think what we're going to see Steam dry up so. here is the scattershot approach that we're all familiar with, and what Pedro's right. This is just this pro. What is that? Just pro dump trucks and money on seeing what sticks this is this is not getting rid of this this is not exclusives aren't going anywhere they're not and if you think the days are done or numbered mm -mm. they're just gonna be more selective about it like they used to be like i said back in the olden times and a long long ago yeah if you got something like oh shit we need to get that one because we can see where this is gonna go they get the deal only them not six other companies along with them you know <laughs> Sausage Simulator 9000. Sorry. Yeah. You, you don't get your uh, Epic exclu exclusive deal anymore. They're trying to assure their bets. Absolutely. Because like you never know what, what's going to take off. You never know what new game is just going like, right. to resonate like, with people. Again, and the, it, you yeah. brought it up, dude. Uh, Lethal. Company. Lethal. Yeah. Like I, I saw that and I'm like, Neh. and then I watch people play it. and I'm like, oh, my. Yeah. You, you, yeah, it, it's a, it's a complete shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know what's going to be successful. And I guess like these guys were hoping, oh, if we like fund a bunch of our know, guys, right. incubator, yeah, yeah, we're 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 going to give them a bunch of money, and they're going to put out a bunch of good shit, and they're going to draw all the shit to us. But like, you can't force it. You 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 can't force this thing. You can, can't you can manufacture only, it. You 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 can create the environment and hope for the best, but that's kind of it. Now I can see Microsoft's strategy because you know Microsoft has been on this buying spree, right? Mm -hmm. And. I don't think Microsoft had anything to do with Starfield, but that, that piece of shit was been baking long yeah, that, before that, it showed that, 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 That's the Todd Howard it. special. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft did have something to say because uh, Starfield was going to come out um, uh, the same day that Skyrim came out, but in 2022, so 11-11-2022, and mm -hmm. it only came out in 2023. Uh, so, so there we, was a whole year that Microsoft you're looked saying at we the game. Should. Thank Microsoft for them going, <laughs> no, it is not ready. Yes. <laughs> Microsoft had uh, that particular impact on Starfield. Um, it so, was. Yeah, Starfield could have been worse, people. 
but yes, is, 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 is that is that really is that really like is, I think that's more of an indictment on Bethesda than it is like a compliment oh, yeah. well, towards Microsoft. Bethesda was yeah. making another Bethesda ass Bethesda game. Like this is yeah. this yes. is what we know. Like everything's in the motion. It just turns out like the market has moved on. We're like we got better options than, than just another generic Bethesda ass Bethesda game. Like yeah. <laughs> Well, well, you get, you get shit like Outer Wilds and Avowed that is going to be right. Bethesda games better than Bethesda games because you know like, in the Outer yeah, Worlds, you know, you Outer Wilds is a worlds. different thing. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know what I mean. You know, when it comes down to it, you know, Microsoft is you know it's easy to like be very short sighted with like Microsoft gobbling up these studios, and this is like a two sided thing. It's good in the sense that you know this is the natural life cycle of businesses, and the people at those companies that are vested, they're going to get out. They're going to create their own indie studios. And they're going to go back. You know, they want to make games. They don't want to be tied up in some corporate bullshit structure. No, like this is how it's always worked. But Microsoft's playing that long game, homie. Like Valve was playing that long game when they made those original Steam machines. Like they're looking ten years down the road here, and like we're we're seeing like year to year. You know, we're thinking like investors, like uh, no, see, we don't have immediate results. Probably Microsoft's. That's I, part of their plan, man. Not not exclusives or anything like that. It's like getting well, that yeah, talent. Well, now, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on to that talent or how it's going to, but I think that's part of their plan of like actually having some good games later on. Maybe, but like, I, I don't think, I think like ultimately that consolidation is just going to result in like. Consolidation more more. creates new studios. Though. W- with money from what? <laughs> there, there, there's, from there's the people no, there's... that just got fat motherfucking paychecks because their company yeah. got bought. So they're yeah, split off. I mean, I, that's that, the, that, that's that, how that, it's that, always that, worked. That, 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 that becomes less and less and less and less. I don't think it's. I don't think that's. It's, then it's that studio model. becomes big, and what happens? It gets bought, and it happens over and like this has been going on for like thirty freaking years, man. Like this is like Microsoft buying up a bunch of studios. Like not not right new playbook here, man. Like this yeah, has just been it, happening. It wasn't just Microsoft. If even if you look like the the example I know best is uh, EA bought Bioware. Oh God, EA, yeah, like there you go. There's your '90s and early 2000s yeah. example of like how many studios right. did EA just right. and how and how how many of these dead IPs that could be made into like great games are just I'm not talking about IPs. I'm talking about games. And then what do you, what do you have... think it's turned into games? <laughs> you have then why do the you hate original you... IP, Jordan? I don't. All I don't, I'm hearing but... is I hate original IP. <laughs> yeah, bring oh, back yeah, my that, old that, games, that's, man. That's exactly that's exactly what I'm for saying. Fucking Mario beta. only. Mario but only. Everything needs for to be all Mario. for all the games that do end up dying because the IP end up in like some copyright hell uh, that they can't be pulled out of. Yeah. The there's also companies like Beam Dog who are composed of. Uh, Black Isle and Bioware and other um, development studios that got bought up by some bigger publisher. Right. And they just got together and try to get as many of their old IPs back under their own wing so they can keep developing it. That's why we have Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition and the Baldur's Gates Enhanced Editions for 1 and 2 and the Icewind Dales. It's, I want more beam dogs in the world, is what I'm saying. (laughs) You got to get this uh, stuff broken up. Gearbox uh, made the news this week. Yeah, they got sold back from uh, Embracer. Yeah. Embracer put them they on went fire. Back cell. to two K. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so that means what's his name's got paid twice. Re- yeah, yeah, Randy uh, Pitchford Randy, yeah. <laughs> making a lot of bank. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, how, however, it ends up shaking down. Exclusives uh, will probably always be around on some some point. But like, what do we think? Do, uh, do we have a different opinion? And like, what if it's a Steam exclusives. How many games are only released on Steam? But Steam doesn't do that, though, right? I don't think there's any situation where you could, outside of like Valve releasing their own game. I, I, I mean, like Steam. Steam has some like. I, I don't think they have any like super public. most favorite nations and stuff. That's, yeah. yeah, that's that's public. Yeah. But like, um, but yeah, like at, at at the same time, like Steam is just a PC gaming store, right? Like you, they, you could be selling How your game. You? Via Valve, Steam is a community, out. Jordan, filled with. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, and ab- money. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff, Gabe stuff and a few other stickers. Valve people, Gabe and a few other Valve people have said that they don't want exclusives on Steam. You're if you have your game on Steam, great, but you're free, very much encouraged to have it on more places. I mean, Valve doesn't like really care. Like, long as they get their thirty percent, we're good. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the news. We got one little bit of hate mail. If you want to get in touch with us, head over to linuxgamecast.com, smash that contact button, fill it out, click send, leave in a YouTube comment, leave in a YouTube comment, sure, leave out a YouTube comment, and we might put it in anyway. If you do leave uh, your response, your thoughts, hints, allegations on the Patreon post for our beautiful party patrons, uh, you're going to get on the show guaranteed. Everybody else, make it good, and we might throw it in like we did this week. Last week, we were talking about the most slap fighty of slap fight computer nerd thing we got going on. <laughs> That's right. AMD versus NVIDIA. Whose corporate waifu is better? And, um, Shadow Mansory. Yeah. They, they, they respond and say, I don't really argue over NVIDIA versus AMD anymore. Not after I swapped to AMD. Everything has worked without the smallest hiccup, star. Since there's nothing to argue about anymore, one is a mess and the other just works. You just kind of lose any drive to argue when you don't have a problem. And before zombies come, but what about CUDA? Like I said, I don't have a problem. Rule one is you don't talk about <laughs> Yeah, don't, 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 don't bring that up. I don't, yeah, I, I, I made the switch not for any like particularly ideological based reasons and more just because the better performing card was the AMD card at my price range. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, I, I've, I've been pretty happy. Things just work. Uh, my, except for like AV one on Twitch that, that doesn't work. That's well, it's not AV that's, that's a Twitch decision. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and apparently, and apparently some of the machine learning shit doesn't, that I don't actually use doesn't work too well on, on, uh, on uh, our DNA three, but I mean, yeah, for years, not, not it's problem. been like, if all you want to do is, uh, play video games and i don't say that in a negative way like that let's face it that's probably well over 90 percent of your use case for a discrete gpu for the home user right yeah like what do you maybe, want to do maybe, maybe some transcode if you're like running mb or something it's maybe. hardware acceleration for the web browser that's it yeah <laughs> like you're kind of good across the board you're, you're living large you got options and uh, like those like shadow man's are brought up and like let's just not discuss the computer situation because you know it's it's it's, there's no competition like it's just it's dumpster fire or nvidia you, you can have a blue dumpster fire or a red dumpster fire or you can just use cuda which pisses it's, it's me off yeah. i was excited i don't want to give you any spoilers but there, there, i had a moment there where i had an intel card and davinci resolve open under linux i'm not going to tell you how that concluded but you might put two and 13 together on that but yeah if it just works um What's your biggest peeve? You've been using AMD longer. What is the most broken thing with AMD? Because Pedro is capable of delivering a honest opinion. Like, there's something with AMD that you're like, God damn it. I think Jordan's going to say some problems. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I do, I do have a gripe. Right. And it's the, it's the power management shit in RDNA 2 and 3 Plus, where uh, you will need to explicitly set either low performance or high performance mode. Uh, or else you get these weird little micro sleeps and you get like these little graphical distortions on your screen that don't really affect anything, but it is just annoying to look at. But yeah, that, but that's like, that is like one CTL setting. And like yes. occasionally if I want to switch it to low power mode, I have to like run an echo command, but like it, it's m minor, minor. Yep. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Burn it. <laughs> Baby with bathwater. Absolutely. Go get a buy an entirely card. new computer. There were some legitimate problems with the AMD the, the open source drivers for a while, like browser acceleration just not being a thing oh, yeah. by well, default. I mean, for, we, we, we've been through that. Like AMD has come so far from a buy an AMD card for a hobby project mm -hmm. to pretty much just pop it in. Now, for me, there's not a universal AMD control panel. Like something... Uh, Mike, the control panel I've been looking at over here on Team Green, so damn old it's got a CRT in it because it's been around on my desktop for 20 years, man. And it's got regular color control. It's got all the fan control. It's all there, and it's, I don't have to fuck around with anything. And that's yeah, one thing that's missing from AMD That because it has to be like, where's that? Because I need color correction on these monitors. Yeah, you use whatever your desktop environment provides. Yeah, that's I don't see that thing. Bullshit, though, because <laughs> I shouldn't have to rely on my desktop manager to set the, color profiles. That's the point between having the open source drivers is that so that Mesa can handle all of the graphical stuff under the hood, but everything that you want to set up and customize, you use your own user stack. That's whatever that happens to be. 
You just, you just got to install the Catalyst Control Center. You'll be fun. <laughs> uh, the full Grix drivers were so bad. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But it had an X-Bot and a GUI. It didn't do anything. Like, it would tell uh, you. That. Yeah, no, it didn't. Uh, it, it, would, it, would, it would just scream at you. That, that was what it would do. Uh, and crash whenever you started the next video sync. Mm. Hi, Skype. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I and mean, then what, what, what was the trick for a... Uh, yeah, that was Skype, right? Because if I said, yes. yep, 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 you could easily take down somebody's machine, which we might have done. You could just crash their X session right then and there. <laughs> All right. Let us know what you think. Hey, if you like the show, you want to kick us some coin, head over to LinuxTeamCast.com, smash that support button. Let's uh, shrink that up or become a patron. Patreon.com forward slash LinuxTeamCast. We got a gang of rewards as a thank you, and we do thank each and every one of you for making the show possible. Stick around for your name in the credits, but we get bonus things. You get live and uncut version of this show. I got some videos, all my experiences with Intel Arc under Linux, answering all the questions that nobody else is going to post on the internet because I couldn't find them when I was searching. That'll be a, join, join, join our Discord to find those answers. I'm going to yes. hide them in our Discord. I'm going to... Uh, Back, I'm going to back edit a post from like six years ago. Put some spoiler tags on them. And in shit, your yeah. and Yes, it's going to be dope as hell, man. We're going to do that. Speaking of Discord, you get access to our Discord if you're a patron or a Twitch sub where this conversation is going on on Twitch right now. That just kind of moves over there for the rest of the week. So, uh, yeah, if you want to come chat with us, and all three of us were in there, we just use that as like our Slack. Like we don't have like, I guess we technically have our side. Yeah, for, for, for the super top secret communications. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is like, Usually something's horrifically wrong when you hear like <laughs> that, that, something's that, on that, fire, like yeah. actually that, that, on fire. That, that is the that is the priority channel. That is that is where things <laughs> right. go that, that, when that, that, need that's the vulture on phone. So yeah. Keep that in mind. Uh we got a store, store.linksteamcast.com. Uh we got Libra Pay, Bitcoin, PayPal, all the fun stuff. Amazon wish list. Come buy these Yahoo's some presents because presents are fun to get. You can potentially kill us. Because sometimes the Amazon person will leave a package right on your front door and you don't know anything's going to show up and you just bust your ass. It's awesome. But you can send in a note, which we will read as a thank you. And if you get anything for the studio, I'll put you back here on the fucking wall. Why? Because you become a fine, upstanding cannibal, just like Frank himself. All right, gentlemen. Also come check out Jordan stream on Thursdays. Are you guys done with the, um, almost, I think, I think we hit the, the so final almost. quest. We hit the final quest. There might be a little bit of grinding, Two, three streams uh, is, my, is my guess. We'll All right. See. Sounds like a fun time. And of course, we do weekly, daily Wednesdays on, you guessed it, Wednesdays, 3 p.m. And track media for patrons and Twitch subs. Oh, we got an RPG server. That's what that adventure with Discord was. It's open to the public on the weekend. Just go jump in it if you want to do track media 2 RPG. If you even know what that is, it's the one with people in it. Easy enough to find. But we switch it back over uh, for Tuesdays and Fridays for new tracks every week. Good excuse to get together, talk some Linux, talk some tracks, talk about movies and TV shows and all the other things that go along with that. All right. There we go. Now, before my voice completely gives up, we're going to cue the music. We do this 830 Eastern right here on Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Teamcast. We're live before that. For patrons, we do the pre-pre-super shows for Death Note, Level, and a buff. And if you're an executive producer, you get a custom live video stream filled with video pixels. If you didn't know about that, that's in the washrooms. Then that link is posted in chat in washrooms and in every week. But if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on all the social medias. Nobody else is named Ven with two N's, not the Diesels, just the Stones. Ven Stone on Twitter. At Vin on the blue skies, and we got masks.linuxgamecast.com where you can find me just at Vin. I'm Pink Eye for the Linux guy. You can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool, <laughs> Mastodon at Frojo at masks.linuxgamecast.com, and Frojo at bsky.app. And you can find me usually a little less croaky than I was today at unaccounted for at masks.linuxgamecast.com, and it's unaccounted for with the actual number four. <laughs> I had to spell it hashtag pelv. Love. Love. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one P-E-L-G-F. I'd like to fuck. <laughs> Done with some credits. What about abdominable?
It's like, say, what if we just had like six packs? It sounds like Photoshop. exercise. Get away from me. <laughs> Get, just shoop, shoop some six packs on all of us. We got to thank our advisors, our Theron and Omegas. Our executive producers, Spark Ram, Scott Michaud, the talk, Bacass, Mike G, Drummer, Tomas, Dave, Ishep, Ian, Kurducky, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got to thank our little Nick Finn, Super Death Stoat, Empty, Glorious Egg Roll, and Super Death Stoat, and King Gabonja. I dare somebody to join as one, two, three, four, five, six. Back in a tragedy, very to know that Justin, Darkwing, System D, Dancing Joe, DeCrezzy, and Ogi One with the Death Notes, Nava Chad, Romeo, Renee, Leonardo, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Joe, Benjamin, Doom, Do Not Watch, Stephen B, Beck, Dodger, Zeno, Rue, Turnover, Pebble, M Fox Dogs, Fine, Jaleur, and Piper. Hey, I got through all of them. <laughs> hey, all of our beautiful cheerlings, up to it, including the fine upstand cannibals like Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, New World, Dios, Knockless, Johnny, Shep, Gamatron, you know, Joe, DS, and Joe. Ah, uh, Aromatic, Dev, and Kai, Joe, right, beautiful people. That's going to wrap us up. I'm just looking at that Voltron phone, and I'm like, man, we need phones that have shit sticking out of the sides, though. I, th I thought that was like Tenga Tapa Gurunlangan. I don't know. Is that the, looks like the, it. The, the, the sunglasses? Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Grand Lagan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Same Volt time, same Tron channel. Dying of fire, everybody. We'll bye, see bye, you next folks. week. Five dudes.